change in market dynamics, global economies, indeed impact the project management styles and hence more and more the need to have some stability in the by definition uncertain environment of project management. Where the risk is a way of life. And that is why I decided to hold the webinar on the two most popular project management buzzwords that we get to hear a lot on the coffee tables. I would also like to make clarify three things uh, before I begin the session. Uh, this session is going to be unbiased and fact-based and is completely, as per my understanding and perspective, on the two frameworks. They are my views and may not be subscribed by any company or person. Secondly, these slides will be made available on the webinar site, so you need not write them or copy them. Instead, just focus on understanding. Thirdly, um, there will be some surprise questions pertaining to the subject that I will ask you during the session. And the first few correct answers would be uh, rewarded uh, by TechGig. And uh, you are required to type in your answers directly on the webinar question answer site. So you need not type them in the chat. But you have to enter on the QA site. Okay, let me take you to my agenda for the uh, 75 minutes that we have together. So the first five minutes I would introduce the topic and uh, answer the question why do we need project management in the first place. Then we'll go on to talk about what makes an effective project manager. Is it just the certification or anything above and beyond that? Then project management certification. When should you do it and why you should do it? And then we come to the, you know, the core subject of my webinar, which is a comparative study between Prince2 and PMP, where I'll spend close to 20, 25 minutes. After that, I take you to eight benefits of formal project management training. Okay, why we should be formally trained? What are the advantages? And uh, since I was already getting a lot of queries on how to prepare for the respective certification exams of these two frameworks, I have uh, I've kept a few slides around how to prepare and some tips and tricks. So I'll cover that for five minutes. Uh, I will summarize and uh, give you some useful links uh, which you can use after the session is over. And of course, I will wind up with a question answer session. I'll be delighted to handle your questions at the end of the session. Okay, so let us begin our journey for the 75 minutes. So the very first agenda topic was why do we need project management? See, project management, all, all of us know the standard definition that it is the discipline of planning organizing, securing, and managing resources to achieve specific goals. Okay? We have to understand that trying to manage a project without project management is like trying to play football without a game plan. So the primary challenge of project management is to achieve all of the project goals and objectives while honoring the preconceived constraints. Okay, so this brings me that what is the use? Why do we need project management? It is because it provides the focused effort which is required through planning and execution to reach a successful goal. See, in business as usual or keeping the lights on, this focused effort is missing, which is why the things do not happen with that energy, with that meticulousness, or with the commitment of all the involved stakeholders. This is why the project management is different from business as usual. That there are cross-functional parties who are committed to a common goal and are you know, working towards that. Now, my first surprise question comes now. I want you to name one organization worldwide 
which is known for its flawless project management practices. Flawless, I say, because they probably cannot afford to fail. So they are very, very good at what they do. I want you to name the organization. I cannot see your answers right now, but kindly enter them in the QA. And uh, I would be reviewing the answers after the session, and uh, the prizes would be shared after that. Okay, so I give you 30 seconds to answer this question because I will have to start with the answer. I cannot proceed uh, without telling you the answer. Okay, the time's up. The correct answer is NASA. Yes, NASA. And one of the best examples that comes to my mind of good project management practices is the 20th century wonder built up in 1998 that is the International Space Station, which is an orbiting laboratory, if you know, and uh, it, it's, it is the scientific expertise of more than 16 countries. And we are maintaining a permanent human outpost in space almost 400 kilometers above the surface of Earth. We are having a host, we are hosting, a, you know, a space station where there is a rotating international crew since November 2000. But did you know that when International Space Station was built, it had 15 modules, 7 US modules, 5 from Russia, 2 Japanese, 1 European, and numerous smaller uh, components from various other countries, okay? But the best part was this International Space Station was assembled for the first time in space. All these components were built in different countries as per the given criteria, but they were never assembled on Earth. They were, all, they were assembled for the first time in space, and it was bug-free. So there was actually no scope for failure, and that is why I, I consider NASA to have one of the strongest project management practices. By the way, they have an organization by the name of APPEL called Apple, not Steve Jobs Apple, by the way, but this is the Academy of Program and Project and Engineering Leadership at NASA. Okay, so this brings me to my second uh, topic which says what makes an effective project manager? How do you say that this project manager is effective and this one is not? Okay. One myth of project management is that certain people have an innate ability to do it well and the others do not. After discussion and debate, only common factor we usually find out is the ability to make things happen. Some people are able to apply their skills and talents in whatever combination necessary. Huh? The combination doesn't matter. In whatever combination necessary to move the project forward and others cannot, even if they have the same or superior individual skills. Now the point is, that although we, we are talking about certifications, but you have to understand that certification is not everything. In my, uh, in my own experience, I have seen many certified project managers who are good for nothing, and I've seen many project managers who do not even know that they are project managers, but they're excellent at the tasks that they do. So the ability to make things happen is a combination of knowing how to be a catalyst or driver in variety of different situations and having the courage to do so. You see, I always say that being a project manager, it's a very courageous job, you know. You have to be able to consider more alternatives before giving up than other people do. You have to question the assumptions that were left unchallenged by others. And this is what probably makes a project manager effective or ineffective, okay? See, certifications also play a major role, but that is about, you know, proving your worth to others. But this definitely is not the sole criteria for your effectiveness as a project manager, okay? 
Now, talking about uh, uh, the, some skills, these are some of the ideas that I have for effective project management. And I would like to state one classic story. Since we are discussing space examples, I would continue to be in the space and give you a classic example from there. A classic story about this attitude of uh, good project management is the Apollo 13 mission. You know, this is the mission that was sent uh, to Moon. And Gene Kranz, uh, who, is, who was one of the leaders in the crew, he describes the effort that went into, that went in, into uh, no, uh, supporting or fixing the life support system that you see on top of it, you know. Uh, the image that you see is of the life support system on board Apollo 13. And uh, this system was damaged while they were on the flight. And it was one of the hardest engineering challenges that the team faced. So this is a problem situation. This is a difficult time. And there were grave doubts among those with most expertise that even a partial solution was possible. So you see the hope was very bleak. Sounds like project management opportunity. Trans took the position that not only would they find a way, they would do so in the limited time allotted. So they had a time constraint. He refused to accept any easy way out and he pushed his team to explore alternatives. Now talk about some of the characteristics of good project management. So he pushed his team to explore alternatives, resolved their disputes and focusing their energy. Now we have to understand whenever there's a difficult situation, there are going to be conflict, difference of opinion, and good project manager requires to see above and beyond the, you know, the, the tinier things. He helps them focus their energy on the final goal. So this I consider as one of the greatest project management and problem solving stories in our history. You know? I move to the, my next uh, topic which is why do we need a project management certification and why are we, no, what is the right time to do for it? But before I move to the details of this slide, I would throw my second surprise question at you. And my question is, what are the triple constraints in a project? I repeat, what are the triple constraints in a project? Okay, you can type down your answers in the Q&A. And I shall continue because I'm not waiting for this answer. So although there are in all six constraints, but I'm looking for the three primary constraints in a project. Now continuing back to my current slide. So when is the right time for a certification? Is it when you are trying to enter into the world of project management? That is, are you a, you are a newcomer? Huh? You have well, always been into business as usual, doing enhancements and all that. But now you are taking a career choice and you choose to be in the line of project management. Okay, sounds familiar. Uh, familiar. So again, yes, this is a good time. Or when your project management career is already firmly established, is that also a good time? I will say yes. Doing a certification is the cherry on top of your resume that shows that to your peers and maybe to your organization and maybe to your customers also that you have certified knowledge and experience. It confirms that project management experiences that you have are not just coincidence, they are not mere coincidence, but due to a variety of proven abilities and are sustainable and will be consistent. See, as we are moving towards globalization, all of us are working in the scenarios where our customer sits far, far away from us. They don't know me. They don't know you. They don't know how we operate. What they understand and believe in are the global certifications, which they recognize and which they have faith in because uh, they know if the person is at 
an ISO level or at a CMM level or uh, whatever, it speaks volumes about the credibility of the person or the organization. Okay. It also shows it also shows that whatever you are doing, the science and art of the game, people are able to trust your abilities better. Also, nowadays certification has become a de facto standard in many organizations. You know, the customers ask it by the name that I want a CMP certified project management manager or I want a principal practitioner to be running my project. So how a certification helps, if you ask me this, I will give you three points answer. It makes your name stand out in a stack of resumes. So certification does become a key differentiator. Over the years, you tend to develop your own style and preferences, huh? uh, which may mean you may have good habits as well as bad habits. See, you, we have been uh, you know, working projects uh, in our own way. So we develop uh, habits, both good and bad. Certification reinforces the good stuff and provides standards and structure to change the bad habits. So it's a kind of a, a, what, it's a water check for you to get aligned onto the good practices. Okay. And third point, it provides a solid base that makes it easier to introduce change to internal methods and processes. So when you know about a standard which is proven outside, it is much easier for you to convince your management and your peers to follow a particular standard method or process. And people listen to you. When you are certified, people see you as an expert and they give you that benefit of doubt. Okay, now I move on to my core topic, which is comparing PIMS2 and PMP. Okay, I go one by one. So PIMS2 is an acronym and it stands for Projects in Controlled Environment and 2 is for the second version. What we, what the latest is in the market is the 2009 release, whereas PMP it's also an acronym, acronym which stands for Project Management Professional. PRINCE2 is a structured project management method and is endorsed by the UK government. So if you see OGC, it stands for Office of Government Commerce because this uh, methodology was uh, found uh, by OGC. And it is the project management standards for public projects. The exam is administrated by APM group. It's a PRINCE2, if I explain, it is a structured project management method based on experience drawn from thousands of projects. And from the contribution of countless project sponsors, PMs, project teams, academicians, trainers, consultants, and so on. The list goes on. It is a non-proprietary method and has emerged worldwide as one of the widely accepted methods for managing projects. This is largely due to the fact that PRINCE2 is truly generic. It can be applied to any project, regardless of project scale, type, organization, geography, culture, style, whatever. The name PRINCE2 and not PRINCE3 or similar is kept, is maintained for years to indicate that the method does remain faithful to its principles. Okay, in PRINCE2 you have to understand principles are non-negotiable always. Now coming to PMP. PMP is a credential offered by PMI uh, and is most popular project management standard endorsed by US and the exam is administered by PMI. Let me tell you a bit about PMI. Uh, PMI stands for the Project Management Institute and it is the leading non-profit organization which is devoted to project management profession. It has a global coverage with members from various leading organizations 
Each city, each area has chapters and active interactive groups. So they are very much into uh, you know, chat groups, a lot of interactions, newsletters, publications. You will find a lot from BMI. You can go to BMI's website and you can become a member and you will be, uh, you can access a lot of good material. You will be invited to you know, uh, interactive, interactive material, etc. PMP certification is amongst the most coveted certifications globally. It's terribly popular in India. Almost 200 uh, people pass PMP every day. And if I give you some statistics, I think we have close to 4 lakh uh, PMPs all over the globe or maybe more. Huh? Right this very minute, I think two or, uh, two or three people would have passed the PMP while our session is ongoing. Um, again, PMP is also industry generic, it, but it has seen a lot of popularity in IT sector. Now, if I, if I look at the differentiators, the key differentiators, Prince 2 is process-based. It is process-based approach to project management, whereas PMP is knowledge-based. Knowledge-based approach because it always seeks on the knowledge of uh, the prior knowledge of project management and in order to continue the knowledge of project management, so it's based on knowledge. Uh, now, uh, as I talk to you, what is the right time to do a certification? My this point would help you take a call. Prince 2 certification requires no prior knowledge or experience in project management. So for people who want to change their line, who want to get into the line of project management, students, uh, uh, no MBAs, uh, any, any career uh, that you may have to do, but if you want to move into the field of project management, maybe Prince 2 certification is a good way to start. PMP certification is very good for people who are current project managers, who have a well-established background of managing projects, but now they want to put a stamp on it because PMP requires at least 4,500 hours of project management experience, which is close to three years of project management. And it's not just a verbal talk. You would require to show proofs about the projects that you have managed. And it would be validated with the organization. So um, uh, you need to be experienced to become eligible for the certificate by PMI and to gain benefit from the certificate on the master. If you want, PMI will not allow you to sit for the exam. And if you fake your experience, um, uh, then uh, God save you because uh, it, there's going to be an inconsistency between your title and your aptitude. Uh, if you are experienced, the PMP will, the PMP certification will give the right signal of proficiency to the marketplace. And it will set expectations that you will hopefully uh, be able to deliver uh, what you have promised. Uh, we have to understand Prince2 is uh, 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 prescriptive and PMBOK is uh, non-prescriptive. So uh, Prince2 is a good one to start with because it will prescribe things. And uh, PMBOK is a better methodology to start when you already have some experience. Now uh, we come uh, to some, uh, you know, some definition of PRINCE2 and PMB. PRINCE2 is a series of management processes defining what must be done, when and how it must be done and by whom over the life of a project. So if you put it in a nutshell, PRINCE2 talks about what and why of the project management, the what and the why. On the other side, PMB focuses more on how. PMP uh, talks about core practices, wider range of techniques that can be applied to manage a project. So it answers the question how to do something. Okay. I move to my next uh, uh, differentiation. Prince 2 is an integrated set. You have to imagine it is a mesh of processes and themes. They are not isolated silos that can be selectively applied in your organizations. The principles are the fundamentals, but all in all, Prince2 is take it or leave it, but it comes as a whole. 
there are uh, no plug and play. On the other side, PMP, each topic area is, can be referred to in isolation of others. It's a plug and play model. So you may choose if you, if you have a scope management requirement in your organization, uh, organization, so you can just take the knowledge area for scope out of the nine knowledge areas and go for it. But uh, Prince2 is an integrated set of process and themes, so they have to come together. Although there is a beautiful principle called tailoring, which does allow you our, our flexibility of you know, reducing uh, certain things, but uh, I, I cannot explain that in detail, but that is a, a USP of Prince2. Now, another major difference between the two frameworks is Prince2 defines the rules of everyone involved in a project. Uh, it uses the principle defined rules and responsibilities when, uh, when we focus on this area. Because uh, Prince2 correctly believes that all uh, people in the organization are stakeholders uh, by one way or another. So it defines the role in this temporary project organization for all involved. Whereas PMP focuses only on the project manager role. So it is project manager centric. Users of PMBOK are sometimes frustrated as people may incorrectly view the project manager as a superman or a superwoman. Uh, that is the planner, decision maker, problem solver, HR manager, etc. Um, am I audible? I see some message I hope I'm audible to everybody. I'll continue. Yeah, you are audible. Uh, now, the, the, I, what I was saying that in PM Bok, every it is expected, the project manager is expected to be a superman because everything is on his shoulders. This may be common in construction industry where PM Bok has its origins. However, in many business projects which, for example, may rely, rely on IT-based solutions, the functional or financial authority does not lie with the PM. So I, uh, I also uh, support uh, uh, here that uh, PM may not be the right person to blame if you do not have funds for your project or if you do not have resources for your project so because that power lies with the senior management. In this business environment, project managers are not always best placed to make the key decisions. In Prince2, the responsibility of the project is with the senior management because they are directing the project. So in the name of project board and the role of PM is to manage the project on a day-to-day -day basis on behalf of the project board or the senior management. So project manager is an executor whereas the decision making authority remains with the senior level. At this point of time I throw my third surprise question at you which is what is the triple I theorem in the context of stakeholders. I repeat my question. What are the I, I, I in context of project stakeholders? I move on uh, with the, my rest of differences. Whenever you have time, you can type in your answers on the website. One moment. Okay, I move to my next difference, which is specialist aspects and detail techniques are not elaborated in Prince2 due to the generic nature of the framework. <clears throat> Whereas detail techniques are well documented in PMP. So you will find uh, you know, PERT analysis, uh, EVM, earn value management top-down, bottom-up, you'll have all kind of estimation techniques or uh, I don't know, uh, calculation techniques available to you uh, by virtue of the various techniques which are explained. I move to my next subject. 
Now we have to know that uh, PRINCE2 is a de facto standard method for UK with a strong presence in Europe, Australia and other English speaking countries. Currently very demand, high demand in India since 2010. So it's catching up very fast in India. And PMP is by far the leading approach in North America and uh, almost worldwide because it has been uh, you know, a kind of a de facto standard for project management. So it depends on uh, what you need, depends on what kind of clients your organization have or what is asked for. Now, secondly, I want to share with you that what does it mean when you are a Prince2 practitioner or when you are a PMP? Being a Prince2 practitioner demonstrates that you master the Prince2 methodology and have the necessary skills, sorry, I've missed the word skills, to apply the knowledge in real life case scenarios because this is what the examination tests, the application of your knowledge. Whereas PMP, uh, globally recognized and demanded, the PMP demonstrates that you have the experience, education and competency to successfully lead and direct projects, including all the techniques. With this, we move to our last slides on differentiation and then we'll move to the certification information. The unique selling proposition of PRINCE2 is the tailoring approach. This is what I mentioned on my previous slide. This is one of the principles of PRINCE2, tailor to suit the project environment, which ensures that the project controls are based on project scale, complexity, importance, capability and risk. So it recognizes, PRINCE2 recognizes the fact that they cannot provide a one size fits all. You know, it's not one size fits all uh, formula to project success. It is a flexible framework that can readily be tailored to any type or size of project. So I think this is one of the big strengths uh, that they have. PMP being a knowledge area base, it does not offer any such flexibility of, uh, but what it offers is that you can plug and play and you can take knowledge areas as and when you require. PRINCE2 does not cover in its scope specialist stats aspect detailed techniques or leadership soft skills. Uh, whereas in PMP, all the leadership capability, even professional ethics, social responsibilities are well covered. Um, uh, we have to understand PRINCE2 is an integrated approach. So if you use most of PRINCE2's approach to a specific piece in the first round of implementation, you can add features in plug and play. Uh, like project boards can be powerful when implemented. Uh, you can start to use product descriptions and so on. Business case is uh, one of the buzzwords here. PRINCE2 is based on 777 principle, that is 7 principles, 7 themes and 7 processes. In addition, there are only 2 techniques uh, which are also not uh, any calculation techniques, but there are more styles or disciplines which have been advised. One is the product based planning. So you would have heard the term uh, called the uh, no work breakdown structure. So what PRINCE2 offers is the product breakdown structure on which is based the product based planning. And then another very powerful technique to customers quality expectations is the QRT which is also called the quality review technique. Uh, besides this, uh, PMP is instead based on nine knowledge areas. It has five process groups and 42 processes. And for, uh, so uh, if you have to study, you will have to, this is the way you will study them. Another thing that I would like to share uh, with my experience is that PRINCE2 is more like simple English. It's a common sense based methodology, it requires no marking up. It is very easy to comprehend and remember. So it's like, uh, you know, uh, if you are in a particular scenario, how would you behave if you want the project to succeed? So it's very, um, it comes on to you. It's very simple to um, understand. Uh, whereas I feel that PMP deals with detailed techniques, so it has a lot of calculations, formulas, it requires marking up. 
uh, no, the inputs and outputs to each process is expected to clear the certification. You have to do a bit of memorization there, which uh, can be a challenge at times. Uh, the decision for an organization, now I'm talking at an organization level, if an organization wants to go the pins to way, what is absolutely mandatory is the senior management commitment. Because this is one methodology which is applied top down. So one of the critical success factors uh, for the success of PRINCE2 in any organization is uh, by far the, uh, the, the commitment that the senior most management shows towards the uh, success of this uh, methodology. Uh, whereas uh, PMP techniques can be applied by the project managers creating a standard culture of project management. So it's more bottom up. Uh, although it is good to have the corporate policies uh, made and then cascaded, but uh, PMP does not stop you from using techniques at any given point of time. But for Prince2 that won't be possible because it requires a lot of project board commitment, approvals because they, you require them as directors of the project. And now I tell you a bit about uh, the certification information in the next four or five slides. Prince2 training organizations must be accredited and hold a UK government license to train in Prince2. So list of accredited ATOs uh, in any country are available on APM International website, so you can find if you want. Uh, PMP training organizations are not required to comply with an internationally recognized management standard for training and certification. Uh, Prince2 requires a five-day intensive classroom training, usually followed by a certification exam. Results come out in four weeks' time. They typically take four weeks to six weeks now that uh, APM has presence in India. So it takes sometimes less than four weeks also. For PMP, uh, you have to, you're required to do a four to five day intensive contact training program followed by some self-study before you uh, take the certification exam. So you have to give in at least 150 hours of uh, self-study uh, before you take the certification exam in case you are intending to clear it in first shot. Again, a bit on the trainers. Trainers must pass an independent competency assessment interview before certification and are subject to assessments on annual basis. Uh, PMP trainers competency to deliver technique is not formally assessed. Uh, but uh, I believe that most of the good training organizations in India are having good PMP trainers. So you have to see for yourself. Then this So uh, you can find host of activities which earn PDUs. So once you are certified PMP and you are on PMI website, you can start to accumulate your PDUs by all such activities. For example, if you attend uh, a project management related training for eight hours, you will earn uh, some PDUs and so on. The details you can check up from PMI website. The exam uh, of Prince2 is based on OGC manual, Managing Successful Projects. 
Trins2 is in public domain, uh, that is there is no charge to use Trins2. It offers non-proprietary uh, best practice guideline on project management and it's a registered trademark of OGC. Uh, for PMP, exam is based on PMBOK. PMBOK is project management body of knowledge and uh, what is currently in the market uh, which have to start is fourth edition. It's a publication that encompasses the recognized best practices in project management. So if you are uh, planning to uh, know, work on the PMP certification, you will be required to read PMBOK fourth edition uh, very well. Now let me take you uh, to the certification, uh, the eight benefits of formal project management training that why it is a good idea to have a formal project management training. Okay. The first point is that helps, it helps you be a more valuable contributor to your company by meeting the customer specific criteria certification criteria. So if the customers are asking for a certified PM, then uh, you will be able to, uh, you'll be certified and you'll be much better positioned to understand the respective lingos because you have to understand each project management methodology or whatever technology will have its own lingo and you will not be able to understand or converse with others who are certified unless you are also. Uh, then once you are uh, formally trained, you are uh, there are high chances for you to develop better schedules to help you meet timelines, track resources, anticipate risks, deliver projects on time, and keep projects within the budget, which is a challenge most of the time. Huh? There are, I have not seen many projects uh, which are able to respect the budget and time constraints. Uh, then uh, a formal project management training will help you successfully manage teams across organizational and global boundaries. So this is very pertinent for our environment today. It's very rare that people sit under one uh, roof. Then the fourth point is you'll be able to determine the correct number and type of resources for your project to ensure success, saving you time and costly mistakes. So, as we say that resources are uh, one of uh, the key contributors or key success factor for the success or failure of the project. So it helps you out there. Helps you develop team building skills. Learn how to confidently develop project success criteria and methods to clearly demonstrate a project success. Prepare and sell the project's business case better. Discover how to use resources more efficiently, improve stakeholder communication and multitask in a more efficient, efficient manner because as a project manager, trust me, you will be expected to multitask. And then lastly, communicate more effectively resulting in less downtime and smoother workflow. So this according to me are some of the you know, good uh, benefits that you might get out of it. Now let me move you to some details on how to prepare uh, a bit, uh, some of the details on your certification exams. So as I told you, the entrance to certification, it is based, uh, it is governed by APMG and it involves passing of two paper based exams. So there are two levels of certification. One is called the Prince to Foundation which is typically a one hour multiple choice exam, paper based, and it tests the fundamentals or concepts of Prince 2. So what is the prerequisite? That you are required to attend either a classroom training um, uh, by any ATO, or you can even self-study. And they have some tie up with the, I think British uh, Council or somebody, I, I'm not so sure on that regard, you can check up on APM website, but there is also a possibility to self-study and take the exam directly. You will be required to gain 38 out of 75, so 75 total questions, you have uh, 60 minutes to answer them, so time is a bit short. You will not even get uh, um, one minute to answer one question, so you have to be really quick. 
and is not a problem if your fundamentals are clear during the training. So you just need uh, one good trainer. Uh, you require 55% pass marks. But once you have cleared the foundation, this is a certification which, which says that yes, you know the fundamentals, but it is not really uh, recognized in the market uh, to tell you the truth. People ask for Prince to practitioners, not foundation experts. Now, to go to the second level of uh, uh, expertise, which is the Prince to practitioner, you will have to take a two and a half hour exam, which is objective, objective testing exam format, which is something like multiple choice, but not really multiple choice. And they test the application of the Prince to knowledge in real life scenarios. And it, this requires in-depth understanding of the concepts of Prince 2. So you, uh, a shallow study will not help you in the practitioner exam. You have to be really clear on what you are talking about. Okay, so you have to be very, very clear on what you are going to talk, uh, what you are going to uh, write on. You have to understand the real life project scenarios because this is what they, were, they are checking, the application of the knowledge. By the way, one good news that this is an open book exam. Um, and the bad news is that if you do not know where to find, this open book won't help you in those two and a half hours. So you are allowed to carry only the OGC manual during the exam. But uh, what I really like about this too is that uh, the manual is with you. Uh, if you understand, then you are able to go right to the place and take the help. So that the system allows. Uh, but uh, if you do not know, if you're, if you're really opening that book for the first time, then God help you. It is useless because it's a fact manual, around 350 pages and so on. The prerequisite to appear for a practitioner is that you should have passed the foundation exam. Definitely, because if you have failed the first one, then you are not allowed to sit for the second one. Then you must either attend a two-day Prince to practitioner training by an ATO, or again, you can go into the self-study mode. Okay, so in all, if you uh, if you can spare five days, then uh, there are high chances that you can get a Prince to practitioner certification. Then I take you to how to prepare. Okay, yes, I, uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you that again on practitioner pass marks, you require 59 on 508, uh, 508. So in all, there will be nine sections. Seven questions will be on the 17th, and two questions will be on the process groups. Uh, they're randomly selected, and it is quite an interesting question paper. And uh, five questions out of 108 are unmarked. Uh, that means that even though you have them right or wrong, you will not be marked against them. They are sort of R&D questions. Even the MP does it, so, so does Prince2 because they are trying to evaluate uh, the new questions into their exam format. So you have to score 59 on 108 in two and a half hours. There is no negative marking. Now, if you ask me the question, how do I prepare for a Prince2 certification, this is what I can tell you to the best of my knowledge. See, it is based on managing successful projects with Prince2 2009 edition. Okay? So this book is available in all the bookstores. This book is available uh, on the uh, APMG website. So it is a manual which will be given to you if you attend a training also. And this is the Bible for Prince2. So you have to go through each line. So one, you can attend a three-day classroom training, follow with some mocks, and then attend the real Prince2 Foundation. The results are made available immediately. So you will know pass or fail. You do not get to know the real marks out of 75. You, you just know whether you have passed or failed this exam. By the way, you can reappear, reappear I think. Uh, then you have to attend two more days of classroom training on practitioner. After that, I recommend that you must go through the OGC manual once completely. With special emphasis on the product descriptions, which are usually given at the appendix of the 26 management products. So in this two, there are 26 management products, roles and responsibilities of uh, the various stakeholders like senior users, senior executive, uh, senior supplier, 
project manager, team leader, project assurance, and so on. So you have to read those from the manual. They are all very well detailed in the appendix. Without this, please do not try to appear for the principal practitioner. Otherwise, uh, very low chances of you to clear it. Then you must take at least two mock exams and learn from your mistakes. So trust me, this is going to help you a lot. Uh, doing the mock exams and uh, you know, understanding why you were wrong and what is the right way. So you will get references from the OGC manual that why the right answer is the right answer and why others are incorrect answers. So when you start to score above 80% in your mock exams, or at least 75%, then you are ready to take the final exam. But my recommendation is do not stretch it on for too long. Try to have your principal foundation uh, and the practitioner and the certification done within a span of two months. Now we come to PMP certification. Accreditation is governed by PMI and it involves passing of one computer-based exam conducted in the ProMetric centers. So PMP is one exam. The duration is four hours, 240 minutes you will have. There will be 200 MCQs, that is multiple choice questions. So if you see the time is much more little here. You have 200 questions and 240 minutes. In PRINCE 2, you will be short on time. So you have to really polish your speed to answer PRINCE 2. But in PMB, you have ample of time. So for an average speed person, the time should not be a constraint in PMB. Now out of these 200, please understand that 25 questions are pre-test questions. That is unmarked. They are randomly placed throughout the exam. These questions are not evaluated. They are only for research purposes. You will be only evaluated on the basis of 175 questions, but you have no way to identify which 25 are unmarked. So you have to go, go prepared for that. To pass, you must answer a minimum of 106 out of the 175 scored questions correctly. Okay, so even if we uh, uh, forget about the 25, so let me just talk about the 175, then 106 questions must be correct. After you finish and submit the exam in the ProMetric Center, you will be immediately receiving the overall mark sheet for the exam. So you will, again, there will be no numbers. You would be just shown that how well you did in each section which is fair enough because you get to know whether you are PMP certified or not. Again, uh, for pre uh, sitting in the ProMetric Center, again, you have to take booking uh, from the PMF website. You can take it as per your convenience. You can change the date also. In this exam also, there is no negative marking. So please understand that you there is no point leaving a question unmarked. Please try to attempt all the questions. Don't leave any question unmarked. You are not allowed to take anything except your IDs in the exam. No mobiles, no pens, no pencils. You are provided with rough sheets, pencils, a calculator, and an earplug inside the exam center. So I don't think you're allowed, you're allowed to walk out, have tea or coffee, anything. You may take a short break, 5 or 10 minutes during the exam, which is okay. But the timer of that 240 minutes will stay on. So there is no time when the timer will be off. So the 240 minutes are going on. Now it's your own sweet will whether you want to keep on sitting there or you want to take a break. So this is as far as the information on PMP certification. Now let me take you to how uh, you should prepare uh, for PMP. Uh, since it's based on the PM of fourth edition, so you must attend a 35 hours of classroom contacts program with a good trainer. It's an absolute must uh, uh, because uh, the person will help you uh, understand the concepts and the formulas and the input output. But here also there is a self-study option. After that you must go through the PM Box 4th edition. Read some popular books, um, search on the net, like uh, Rita Malaki 7th edition is also like the Bible for PMP, uh, so people who are uh, trying to appear for the certification. 
So my idea is you must invest at least 150 hours of self-study. You have to take time out for it. Take few mock exams. There are loads available on the net and uh, whatever training organization you choose, they will also give you some mock exams online. Revise the sections of the books and the PM book on which you are not scoring well. So you will be tested on the sections. So you will know your strong areas and you will know your weak areas. So identify and polish the weak spots, uh, you have to work on them. When you start scoring above 80%, then you are ready to visit the Prometric Center for the exam. Okay, so this is what it is. Okay, now I'm on to my last slide, which is summarization. So we have seen uh, about project management, we have seen what makes an effective project manager and now I would try to summarize it for you. So please understand Prince2 and PMP do not compete. Instead, they are complementary. There is considerable misunderstanding in the marketplace about the differences between the two approaches. So as I shared that uh, these are complementary. Uh, Prince2 and PM Bok adopt two different approaches to managing a project and by their nature they complement each other. Uh, some of the, the flaws are there in either of them. For example, the key criticism of uh, Prince 2 is that it misses the importance of the soft skills required to manage a project uh, and it would probably provide more detail on knowledge areas such as scope management and contract management which PMP, PMBOK provides good guidance on. It is possible that the recent popularity of Prince2 is because it provides a standard approach uh, for the management of all types of projects. Every function of an organization can use it. Whereas PMBOK leaves it open to the PM to decide on their approach, which often means different approaches to manage different projects. Larger organizations uh, um, have preference for standardizing the management of projects. Uh, otherwise, they cannot sustain. Uh, they cannot afford to have different project management methodology for their you know, um, uh, hundreds of projects. And they view Prince2 as a solution for their standardization. The other advantage uh, that I see with Prince2 is that little project management experience is needed to apply it, whereas PMBOK requires time and experience to be appropriately applied. PMBOK can be summarized as an approach that provides information on what a project manager needs to know. So I would rather call it an operational Bible that when you are on the ground then you need this Bible. Whereas Prince2 demonstrates how to apply this knowledge. That is the what's and the why's. The process clarity and the strengths of Prince2 are balanced by the depth of the PMBOK guide. Okay, so this is how I would like to put that the uh, the Sprint 2 gives you a lot of process clarity because it is a process based approach. Whereas PM Bot Guide gives depth. So they balance each other. So in summary, if I say a skilled project manager is the one that can apply the knowledge areas of PM Bot with the aid of project management process of Prince 2. A highly skilled PM should also have the know how to apply these methods appropriate to this scale complexity, nature of the project and adapt them for the fast-paced projects. So finally I would like to say that PMBOK and Prince to make ideal partners. They have sufficient similarities to make them compatible and they have sufficient differences uh, for each to benefit from the strengths of the other. So if you choose to use together, which is also a very good option by the way, you are taking advantage of the two most respected project management approaches in the world today and they're getting the best of both. So very recently I've seen uh, many people are certified both on Prince2 and PMP and uh, by the way I'm also calling the same path so I'll be appearing for my PMP pretty soon that's what I shared in the beginning. Uh, now I come to my last slide which is on the useful links. Uh, uh, there are uh, if you want to attend my previous webinar, it is available on this uh, link. Then if you want to read about some Prince2 success stories, articles, they are available at APMG International website for PMI, 
information, you can go to pmi.org.in. And if you have any further questions or clarifications, please feel free to write to me at uh, uh, my email ID, which is mentioned here. And uh, that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your time. And now I'm open for questions. Yeah, the questions are already shared with you. Can you see in the chat pane? Uh, I'm not able to see Keshav. Uh, could you please come over and uh, help? I can just see the questions that I have posted, but I'm not. I cannot see audience questions. Okay, uh, so now I can see your questions. Uh, which countries prefer Prince2 and which PMP also for what sector of company both these are valid? Uh, question by Deepthi Kanmachi. My answer was that in the session, Prince2 is more popular in Europe, uh, uh, Australia, even Singapore, Canada, and uh, more European influence. PMP is uh, more American uh, and is popular in all other countries. Uh, and for what sector, they are both generic methodologies and they are, uh, so for IT or non-IT, uh, they are uh, applicable in both. Um, with certification, six plus years of IT, I would refrain from answering any personal things. So at the moment, I would look for more global questions. Uh, which certification can help me to practice project management with a government client, Mr. Hinder Pal Singh? Now, it depends which government are you talking about. Are you talking about the Indian government or the UK government or the American government? Uh, so, as I said, uh, the popularity of the methodology is uh, governed by the countries. So, you have to see where you have to do the project and what is more popular with them. So, you have to seek from your customer. Uh, The question says, if we are aiming for a project management career in UK or for the UK-based client, which is preferred PMP or PINS2. Similarly, let me know in US also. It's the same. It's the same question, uh, Jagopal, that I just answered. Uh, that for UK, I think uh, if you're uh, working for a client, they would be asking for a PINS2. And for American clients, uh, still uh, they ask for PMP. Um, again, uh, Mm. Is Prince2 Foundation applicable for lifetime? I believe Prince2 Practitioner is the one where you need renewals. Uh, for Prince2 Foundation, uh, yes, there is no repeat exam. Prince2 Foundation, there is no need to uh, repeat your certification, but uh, Apurva, the, the point is that it is not uh, much uh, recognized. Foundation is uh, like you have not posted yourself yet. So it is just for you. You know it. But the people don't care really. Until and unless you have, you show them that you have an ability to apply that knowledge. Uh, then Suresh Kavali has asked the question that PMP requires 60 PUD PDUs over three years engaged full time in PM. Does it mean if one works as a project manager in a reputed organization and place project management role covers the 60 PDUs? No, not really. Uh, the exact terms and conditions of how you can earn the PDUs is explained on the PMI website and uh, I would rather ask you to check it up from there. But uh, what I understand is that if you attend an eight-hour training on project management, you can earn eight PDUs. Similarly, there are a lot of uh, internet uh, events that keep on happening. 
international project management day and all where there are uh, you no know, uh, webinars speakers uh, uh, papers which can earn you uh, um, PDFs by the way so the idea is to see that are you practicing your skills so this is what PMI wants to check Um, Raman Kumari asks, uh, says that is explained by you princess based on process which I feel is better approach than knowledge base. Do you agree if not? Why? Uh, see uh, I would not like to do any uh, favoritism here but it's a matter of perception. I've tried to put some fact in front of you that uh, one is process based, the other is knowledge based. So now it depends on what is your need, uh, what, what suits you more. So both of them are good and uh, so it depends on what uh, is better for you. Now then the next question is uh, by Sriram Ramanujam who asked the question, in the current scenario many tools and methods are used for project management. How they are relevant with PMP or PIMS tool? It's a very good question Sriram. Uh, you are right uh, that there are many tools but you have to understand that the tool may be any. Uh, you know, you can do Prince 2 even using Microsoft Excel. You do not need to go uh, Microsoft tools simply. Huh? You can uh, create your uh, project B documents in Microsoft Word. You can create your project PID using uh, Microsoft Word. You can use Excel to create your business case investment appraisals. And you can create use Microsoft Project Professional to create your Microsoft plan. Similarly for PMP, the tool may vary. Tool really is just an application of how you want to run it in your organization. So the tools can be tuned as per the methodology you choose. So you can customize your tools um, according to PMP or PIMS tool. So they are more the front end. But uh, having uh, the methodology is the brain behind that how you want uh, projects to be done. Okay. Um, uh, let me go to can I use the agile methodologies in both Prince2 and PM Bok? Ramesh uh, Rajmani has asked this question. Uh, see it is interesting. Uh, good question again. But you have to understand uh, Prince2 and PM Bok both are catering to project management. Whereas agile methodologies, we are talking about uh, the software development life cycle. We are talking about either Scrum or waterfall model. Yes, uh, see, in a project something gets developed. You know, if you're talking about a software development, we will need we will need some agile methodology. So that's where, for example, in Prince2, uh, when you are doing uh, the managing product delivery uh, uh, process, when the code is being developed or when the software is being developed, you may use Scrum or you may use anything, um, uh, DRDC or whatever. You can use that agile methodology for software development during a small part of project management. Because you see, the life of a project is much longer as compared to the life of the development of a small software or a piece of code or a, you know, installation of a hardware, for that you can use your agile methodology. Um, does Prince2 also speak about professional ethics similar to PMP? No, it doesn't. Uh, Naomi Bin Muhammad, uh, this is a question from him. No, Prince2 refrains uh, from any soft skill, leadership uh, skills, specialist aspects, detail techniques. No, it purposely does not uh, go into that area. Uh, yes, uh, then the next question is from Mira, Mira Damakondwar that are these the only key certifications in the project management arena? No, not really. There are others. Uh, there is CAPM, then there is IAPM. So um, if you search, you'll find lots of other uh, certifications which are uh, not as recognized as these two, but uh, yes, they are there. There is also a very new agile project management is also being launched. Uh, 
both by PMI Agile and by APM. So uh, that which is based uh, more on the uh, inspect and adapt principle. Any more questions? I do not see any more questions uh, here. Uh, Keshav, uh, if you can hear me, please let me know if there are more questions because I cannot see any more questions. If there are no more questions, uh, then probably we can uh, close the session, Keshav. Okay, so um, okay, the next question is, can you shed some light on the cost comparison between the two with respect to both training and certification? Satish Pillai has asked this question. Valid question. Um, see, uh, there is a lot of variation in the market uh, depending upon uh, the various training organizations. But I will say a PMP training uh, would uh, cost you close to twenty to twenty-five thousand. And uh, you have to become the member of PMI, and the exam cost it comes to be around five hundred fifty dollars, five hundred fifty dollars. Uh, so that's uh, that is about the MP for Prince Two. Uh, both for the training and certification, there are various uh, you know variety of uh, uh, ranges from anywhere between thirty thousand to fifty thousand. Uh, you have to pay for a Prince 2 training and a certification. So, okay, I see one of my colleagues, Anupam Srivastava, has asked me a question. How risk management is done in Prince 2? So, in Prince 2, uh, Anupam, we have a whole uh, theme called risk, which talks in detail about uh, the risk management procedure which talks about you know, identification and planning and measuring the risk and finally implementing the risk. So uh, there is a risk register which is maintained uh, during the life of a project and uh, how we take care of uh, the various issues and risks is uh, throughout the life of the project. So all the issues and risks are maintained uh, within the respective registers and are escalated to the stakeholders and uh, which are then closed by them. So the risk owners uh, can be other than the project managers. It is not a must that uh, if you are a project manager, you become uh, responsible for handling and closing all the risks. Mm. Now I get the next question from Apoor Kumar uh, once more. So what, how much documentation is required for Prince 2 or PMP? See, uh, for Prince 2, I can tell you, uh, since it's a tailorable approach, so the PMO of your organization should ideally offer you various customized options uh, depending upon the size of the project. So you can categorize as big project, medium project, small projects, and so on. So for if the business case is light, if the money spent in a project is light, then you can choose the small uh, size project where the documentation required would be only the minimum possible. For example, you would not be required to create a project brief. You would just create the project initiation documentation and uh, you know, have a project plan in place. And you can just uh, have two stages and shoot. In PMP, you are required to prepare uh, you know, certain uh, minimum possible documents. But again, it uh, I think it varies according to the money that you are spending and the risk that you are taking in the project. So if it's a very, it's a legal um, a project and you know your, uh, your organization can be killed if you do not get aligned, then uh, trust me, whatever the methodology may be, your uh, senior management would expect you to do more documentation, more quality testing, more control. So there will be higher governance on such things. Um, what else? 
any more questions? If you have any more questions, kindly type them in. I would be happy to handle them. What about lessons learned in PRINCE2? Uh, Anupam Srivastava again. Uh, for lessons learned, uh, Anupam, what we do is at end of at end of each stage, uh, we start to accumulate all the learnings that we are making in our project uh, in something called a lessons log, and uh, they are captured uh, formally in the end stage report. So this is something which is uh, sent out even to your uh, senior management that these are the mistakes that we made and the other project managers should not make the similar ones or uh, these are the good things that we did so these are the things that have to be reproduced in other projects so rather uh, one of the principles of uh, Prince 2 is uh, learn from experience so as they say wise people learn from other people's experiences so right uh, as soon as the project begins the very first thing that the PM is expected to do is refer to the organization's lessons learned knowledge base. And these are the duties of usually the PMO organizations in uh, any corporate uh, whose job is to you know, consolidate and make it available to all the project managers. And uh, all these at the end of each stage these lessons are made, captured, accumulated and when the project closes then we issue a lessons learned report which again uh, you know goes to enrich the knowledge base of the company okay then Archie Makija is asking a question uh, hi Sonia where does ITIL certification fit in the bigger picture interesting question Archie uh, the ITIL is again coming from the suite of EPM uh, so uh, if you talk about the ITSM certification, uh, you have to understand the key difference. ITIL caters to service management. That is uh, the life of business as usual. It is uh, more about handli handling the life of the project once it is deployed. So uh, once you have created something, it is about maintaining something. And that is when IT service management or ITIL training will help you. But today we are talking about project management. That is when we are trying to do something for the first time. Okay, so once you create something, then in order to sustain it, you will require ITIL skills. Then uh, Ganesan Natarajan asks me the question for product management, which is the best suitable method, agile or PMP? Uh, product management, I do not understand the uh, in your question very well. If you talk about a product life cycle, it, it is much longer than a project life cycle by the way. Product life cycle starts from an idea, you know. Somebody conceived an idea that, okay, let me create a car, okay. From that moment, the product life will start. And it will go on and on and on and it might include various projects in its lifespan because it will continue till the time that car is manufactured, run on the road and scrapped. So that is all the product life cycle. So I don't think it is fair enough to compare uh, that with PMP or Agile. As I said, PMP and Prince2 cater to project management. Agile methodologies like Scrum, uh, etc., Scrum, Lean, they cater to the software development part. Okay, So let's keep that separate. Now, when Chairman Vijaya Bhaskar is asking me my question, what is the triple I theorem in the context of stakeholders which you asked? Okay, uh, so I just hope uh, that some people have at least uh, answered the question correctly. The, the triple I means anybody who is interested, involved, or can influence or get influenced by the products of your project are called stakeholders. So the I, I, I stands for influenced, involved, and uh, the third one I just forgot, I, I just shared with you, the impacted, involved, and influenced. Okay. Uh, if someone is PMP certified or ready, is it necessary to go for principal certification? Murli Krishna is asking me this question. No Murli, it's not mandatory at all. It completely depends on your choice. Uh, 
if you think it is a requirement in your organization or if you see a better career with it, then uh, so be it. But it is in uh, nowhere it is written that you have to be certified in all both, uh, both project management methodologies. And I think it is the one you have to take the call. Okay, we have overshot the fund the time. I'm getting some good interesting questions. Keshav, do we plan to continue? Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, we have got a few other questions, but due to time constraint, we cannot take all the questions right now. So we can okay. conclude the session now. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for your presence and your interesting questions. I sincerely hope that you gained something today and you have at least two or three takeaways from my session. And I would also like to thank uh, Tech Geek for inviting me here and giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts. I think uh, you're doing a good job, guys. Um, keep it on. Thank you. Over to you, Keshav. Fourteenth of December at three p.m. Topic: Critical Success Factors for Managing Global Projects. Speaker: Mr. Shanmugga Velutham, Global Program Manage Manager at HP. So see you all at fourteenth December at three p.m. Have a nice day. Thank you.